Okay, welcome everyone. You, if you are seeing our faces here, you are currently viewing the webinar for Faith Lutheran's High School Academic Exploration Night. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have quite a night planned. Um, as we wait for a few more people to join in with us tonight, I wanna be the first to say welcome. Um, we currently have around 44, 46, 47 people joining us already. We had 123 people registered for the event. And so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Mai Choi and I serve as our Director of Admissions here at Faith Lutheran. And I'm joined by some wonderful people um, tonight who we'll introduce in a little bit. Um, but a few notes for our webinar tonight. Um, again, you are viewing Faith Lutheran's High School's Academic Exploration Webinar. This webinar was open to everyone who's just in interested in hearing about our high school programs. And so if that's you, you're in the right place. Um, this is a webinar. And so don't worry, uh, we as presenters cannot see you tonight. And so if you're enjoying a bowl of ice cream in front of your computer screens or hanging out in your PJs, that's great. Um, all the more uh, fun for you. And we get to be fancy in our blazers. Um, tonight's webinar will include a few different things. Um, we'll start off the night with a few poll questions to see who's joining us. Um, we'll move in to hear Mr. Scott Fogo, our high school principal. Um, we'll hear from some awesome student speakers, as well as hear information from our, um, our director of our academies program, as well as our high school counselor. Um, another few things to note, remember that if you are interested in applying to Faith Lutheran, applications have indeed opened, and you can find that information on our school's website at faithlutheranlv.org, and applications are open now, um, and you can apply. We would love for you to do so. Um, Mr. Orr, while we're waiting for more people to come in, as we're waiting, can you put up our first poll question here of the night? Uh, families, we would love to know uh, who's joining us tonight. And so when you see that poll question pop up on your screen, please answer so we can see. And we have a few different questions. So the first one is, are you new to faith or are you an existing faith family? Let's see who wins. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. Pretty good. <laughs> We're up to 71 participants right now, which is great. We'll give it a few more minutes. Thank you to those who answered our poll question. For those that are new to Faith Lutheran, welcome. We're so glad that you're joining us today. For those that are current faith families um, in the middle school, wanting to hear more information about high school, thank you so much for joining us. 85% um, and more of our eighth graders um, retain and matriculate to our high school program. And we love that that happens. And then for our new families, uh, for our new ninth graders, especially, don't worry, we get about 80 to 100 new high school students coming in from ninth grade for the ninth grade every single year. So you're not alone. Um, but we have a great retention rate. So you know, as new families that families here at Faith Lutheran, they're happy and they want to stay for high school. Mr. Orr, can you do the next question so we can see what grade are our current um, viewers in here? Let's see here. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you so much for answering our poll question. We know that our viewers tonight are from all different grades and, and such, but we know that you are interested in a few different grades. Some of you might be thinking about transferring. Every year we get a great handful of transfer students to our 10th, 11th, and sometimes even 12th grade. Um, and so we welcome you to the webinar tonight. Uh, Mr. O, about our last question here. If you know so already about our endorsement programs, um, we have many endorsement programs and we'll highlight them tonight and go a little bit more in depth. But here are some of the different areas in the high school that you can, as a student, dive into a little deeper. And so students and families, what are you most interested in? Fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> Mrs. Blank, your STEM Academy is looking pretty good. Oh, nice. Very popular. <laughs> and our Flight Academy, for those who don't know, that's our newest academy that we just launched this year. Very excited about it. All right. We'll give it a few more seconds on this poll. The Honors Institute, that's a wonderful thing that all uh, students that meet our prerequisites can qualify for. Okay, um, so last point of business. Thank you so much for answering our poll questions. So last point of business, tonight during our presentations, as you are hearing from our different speakers and our high school principal and our students, uh, what we'd like you to do is 
um, get questions ready for our final Q&A to close the evening. Um, if you notice at the bottom of your webinar screen, you'll see the Q&A boxes at the bottom. Throughout the night, you can uh, submit questions to be addressed during our Q&A portion at the end of the night. Uh, we'll try to get through as many questions as we can as possible, um, but if you can submit those questions while the presenters are going, that'd be great. And of course, as we go through the Q&A, go ahead and put more questions in as you think about them. Mr. Orr, I think we're just about set. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Okay. Well, thank you again for joining us. Um, I wanna do a quick introduction as to who's here. Um, again, my name is Maya and I serve as our Director of Admissions here at Faith Lutheran. Tonight, we are joined by a few different people. And when I call your name, can you say hi so you pop up on our screen? Uh, first and foremost, I wanna introduce Mr. Scott Fogo, who's our high school principal. Hi everyone. So glad you could be join us tonight. And then we have uh, Mrs. Emily Blank, who's the director of our academies program and our uh, Dean of Arts and Sciences. Oh, Dean of Sciences. No, I'm saying it wrong. You tell me your title, Mrs. Blank. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Um, I'm, I work with all of our academies and I'm the science department chair, but I do head up our STEM academy. There we go. And then um, we also have a student currently with us. This is Lauren Tamita. Lauren, can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> Lauren is a senior with us and she'll share a little bit more about her journey and her story a little later on. And then we'll be joined by another student who's currently in rehearsal, um, William Maniago, and he will join us from his rehearsal for Peter Pan, uh, which we're debuting this weekend. Okay, and oh, of course we have Mr. Orr. Mr. Orr, say hi. Hey, hello everybody. Mr. Orr is helping with all of our technology. And last but not least, we have our, um, our assistant principal of the high school, Mr. Dan Baikema. And you'll see his face pop up, but just in lieu of time, we're gonna get going. Um, and so without further ado, Mr. Fogo is going to start us off. We wanted him to share why he loves the high school, what his philosophy of our high school is, um, other fun facts about him. And just fun fact, first and foremost, it is actually Mr. Fogo's birthday. And so if you know him, send him a quick note, you know, in the chat, go ahead and wish him a happy birthday, all the fun things. <laughs> It is, it is the big 5-0 for me today. I'm turning 50. <laughs> awesome. Well, go for it, Mr. Fogo. Tell us all about the high school. <laughs> well, first off, welcome. Uh, we certainly wish you could be on campus and we could all be together. Um, I, I love this night. I love being able to talk to families personally because um, it's really all about your children. Um, and it's most important for me to get to know your children because that's how we can answer your questions very best. But we'll do our very best tonight and we're so happy you joined us. Uh, first off, I would be remiss, even though it's academic night, I'd be remiss not to talk about the very best things about our school. Um, tonight, you're gonna hear about like a new flight lab and a courtroom and all these really cool things we have on campus. But the very best things about our school are our mission and our people. Our mission um, is basically that we believe deeply uh, in Jesus's love and mercy for all of us. And it's the foundation of what we do. It's why we exist. And it also means that we show up every day um, wanting to spread that love um, by caring for your child deeply and wanting to educate them. And so when our teachers show up every day, they don't show up like it's a job. They show up like it's a mission, like it's a passion um, and, and that they're called to do it. And so if you took a tour of our campus or if you've ever been here, you could walk around and see the most amazing things, but it just pales in comparison to our teachers. I've been the principal here for 10 years and I've hired every teacher in the high school for the past 10 years, every one of them. Um, and I'll tell you what I look for in our teachers. The first thing is they have to love kids. Um, this, this thing that we do here is less about curriculum and more about a zeal to, and to care for kids and to do what's very best for them. And to not to teach them about Jesus, but also teach them about math and science and get them prepared for college and for life. And that's what we're really passionate about. And so that, that's the most important thing for me to say to you tonight. As we transition into our academic program, I have a really important question. It's a really personal question to ask each one of you. And that is, how do you think colleges choose their students? How do they choose their students? And if I asked you, a lot of people would come up with all these theories. That's the SAT scores or ACT scores. That's true, they play a little bit of a role or the classes you take or your grades. Yes, that's important. 
what I'm, what I'm here to tell you today, today is that colleges pick their students because people pick their students. It's people who do it. So I know that sounds weird, it's a transition, but our job as a high school and your job as a family is to make your son and daughter attractive to a person on the other side of that application. And so, yes, there's a lot of kids with 4.0s. If you have a 4.0 when you graduate from high school, probably like Lauren and, and some of our other kids, <laughs> listen, there's hundreds of thousands of other people with 4.0s. And if you get a 35 or 36 perfect score on your ACT, we had three of those this year. If you have a perfect score in your ACT, you're going to be competing against thousands of other kids that got perfect scores. So how do schools choose? About in 2010, I talked to an admissions counselor from Stanford, and they sort of bragged to me that they turned down 600 valedictorians the year before. So how do you get into Stanford? How do you make yourself an attractive candidate? And so we have built, over the last 10 years, we have built our school here to make your child an attractive candidate when it comes to admissions time, right? That is our passion. Um, that's what we want to do. That's how we know it works. And now that with, with COVID happening, your ACT and SAT scores, a lot of schools aren't taking them or their impact is lessening. So how, how, do, how do we get kids into college? How does your son or daughter get into the college of their choice? Okay, and so that, that is what tonight is about to show you how Faith Lutheran is dedicated to do that. And I'll tell you, it kind of comes down to four things. And they do definitely look at your school, right? And so if you have a 4.0 at our school or have a 4.0 at an inner city school, those two things mean different things, okay? We're not criticizing other schools. We would never do that, but it means different things. And so colleges have these huge databases to show how successful graduates from different high schools are in college. A few years back, Mr. Beichmann actually is the one that told me this, was the Ivy League said that we had made their list. And uh, that, that's just kind of a private list that they keep that says these schools, their graduates do well in our Ivy League schools. Okay, and that has happened all over the country now. The best schools in the country know that Faith Lutheran schools, Faith Lutheran graduates do well in school. And so that's really important. What school you do, go to is important. Number two, the courses that you take and the grades that you earn in those are really important. So your job as a student and a family is to display a passion, to show them what you're interested in, take the most challenging courses that you could do well in, and then get good grades. That's, the, that's probably the most important thing that you could do every day as a student is dedicate yourself to getting good grades in classes. Um, test scores are, can still be important. They're a little bit less so the last couple of years, uh, but what, they could become less important in the future. That rumor has been kind of growing. It's been kind of happening a little bit. So then if you have the same GPA and you have the same test score, which you will, no matter what you get, how do you get chosen? And really what Faith Lutheran does a good job of is telling a story on your transcript on your resume, and then also on your essay, helping those three things point in one direction about how incredible uh, your student is, right? And that could, that could go from kids that are really into athletics and really great at athletics. It could be great for artists and definitely great for academics is you wanna tell an exciting story, a story that says you're gonna be successful in college, a story that says you're going to be interested and involved in college. And those things often point to future donors to colleges. And so they get excited by seeing those things on your transcript, your resume, and in your essay. And so those are the kind of things that we specialize in. And how do we specialize in those things? Well, everything we do here is meant to prepare kids for college. Even our weight training is meant to prepare kids for college weight training. Our academics are meant to prepare kids for college. Our arts are meant to prepare kids for college. Our whole entire thing is meant to prepare kids for college. But these academies and endorsement programs are specialized to pull those things out. 
If you have a passion in one of those eight or nine areas that we have, those academies are built to pull those interests out and make them explode on a page at a college admissions time. And so it's very important if you're interested in one of those things to join and do that. Um, and also the, the, the next most important thing or maybe the most important thing that we do is we really walk alongside your children in this journey. Um, if you're in an academy, Emily and, and the other academy leaders really walk alongside the kids and make sure that they're ready for it. Um, you see on your screen, Mr. Dan Beikema, he's our assistant principal and he heads up our counseling department. Our counseling here works so hard to find the very best fit college for your child. And they walk alongside you starting freshman year all the way through applying and actually past applying for college in their senior year. And so those, those things are, the, are, are the, the very best ways that we know of to help our students get noticed um, um, by colleges, right? And so for, for me, our zeal, our passion, our, our, our quest here is to help every individual student look their very best when it comes. Now, kids want to go to different colleges. We've had kids admitted to Ivy Leagues and for their own personal reasons, go to UNLV Honors Colleges. We've had kids that have striven. Their dream is to go to UCLA and maybe they don't quite get in their first year, but we figure out how to get them in that semester or their second year. Our, ours, our really passion is to help uh, your student get uh, to what their dream is and then help them understand what their best fit uh, program is or their best fit college is. And so when we say that we love kids here, um, we, I think you're going to feel that when you come on campus. You're going to feel that this is a faith family and that, that we do care deeply for kids here. And that, that care is shown with how much effort we put into our academic programs, our counseling, our curriculum, our facilities. Our, everything that we do here is really meant to pull out the best um, in the passions of your students and then help them get into college. Um, we love them for more than a, their academic um, you know, genius or their academic progress or how well they do in school. We have kids in the whole spectrum. Some of them struggle at our school and others uh, do great, um, um, but we love them all. Um, and we have programs and assistance for all those kids. So I, I, I don't wanna also point out, this is not a, a school just for Ivy League kids. Um, that, that wouldn't be generous at all. We, we believe this is a school for all God's children and we're going to do the very best uh, that we can with every child. And here's the thing, is even the kids that struggle here, they end up in college and they end up doing well in college. Um, I just had a, uh, a, young, a young girl on probation in my office. She's on academic probation. She's really had a tough time. Um, and I said to her, do you know the great thing is? you're starting to figure this out. And when you do figure it out, you're gonna be successful in college. Learning how to do academics here at Faith Lutheran help you be successful in college. They, they prepare you for that. Um, and that's because we care so much about it, all right? Um, next up, we have a, like a short little video for you that kind of introduces our academies and our endorsement programs um, to you. And then that will be followed by Mrs. Blank, kind of walking you through how to find out more information and sign up for those. All right. Faith Lutheran offers challenging and active coursework, including 36 honors courses and 21 AP courses. We also offer ACT and SAT preparation. Our recent ACT average score is 23.6 and SAT is 1220. Faith Lutheran's block schedule is unique in the Valley as our students are able to take eight classes each semester. This is a huge advantage over schools that only offer six to seven per semester. All of our academic and service opportunities with our eight block schedule, endorsement and counseling programs and unprecedented electives combine to give our students the advantage. We offer several endorsement programs which are like a school within a school. Our endorsement programs include the Honors Institute, Conservatory of the Fine Arts, Business and Entrepreneurship Academy, Christ Academy, Film and Broadcasting Academy, Light Academy, Hospitality and Tourism Academy, 
Jesterson Advocacy Academy and the STEM Academy. Our academies allow our students to explore their passions through very specialized courses, amazing opportunities, all in the context of a Christian high school environment that has all of your typical activities and sports. Besides the specialized courses, the students in our academies compete nationally in activities in their field as well as complete internships. We partner with over 60 local organizations and businesses to offer these to students. More information about our entrance and graduation requirements for these programs is on our website. At college admissions time, endorsements and internship hours are included on Academy students' transcripts. We work to help our students discover their passions and stand out. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. My name is Emily Blank, and I coordinate with our Academy programs here. I also teach chemistry, and I'm also a mom of one of our middle schoolers and high schoolers. So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you guys tonight about was to kind of show you um, where you can find more information out about all of these programs. There's a lot of information, and we can't get every little detail to you tonight. And so I'm going to share my screen with you and um, kind of point you in the right direction for where to find these things. So... So I'm starting on the main faith website here. And when you click on the academics tab, there's a lot of information here. And the first thing that will come up is where you can explore the curriculum. So you saw in the video that we have so many electives and it's one of the things that my own children are the most excited about here at faith. Um, whether you do an endorsement program or not, you can take all of these electives. And if you click on upper school, and then you can look down the different departments here, you can see all kinds of opportunities. So we're starting a new online dual credit program. We also have on ground dual credit. We have a new Faith Lutheran online school that we'll be starting, but you can click on any one of these departments and then all of the electives um, will come up for you. You can click on them and it'll expand. Um, you can see the descriptions, and then you can see any prerequisites that you might need to get into them. Um, but it's just really fun to peruse and see all of the different electives that we offer here. And I love as a parent that we offer room in the schedule so that the kid, my, my child actually has the opportunity to take um, some of these different ones and explore their different um, options that are out there. So up on this academics tab here, besides looking at the curriculum, um, Mr. Fogo mentioned college counseling in the counseling department. You can see more information about that there. The Mark 1014 program. We usually get a lot of questions this evening about the Honors Institute. So I'm gonna scroll down here under the Honors Institute where you can read. So this is specifically for students that are looking to go into a highly selective program or university. You can see um, what kind of qualifications you need to get into the Honors Institute and what it offers to you to help prepare you for those kinds of programs. And then you can see more tabs. I'm gonna start here with the Conservatory of the Fine Arts. Our conservatory is a real, you know, it's a fine arts conservatory within our school. And if you look down here, you can see the different majors that are available. If you click on them, you can read more information about them. And I'll talk more about auditions for the conservatory here in a bit. And then if you keep going on the links, you'll go to our different academies. So we have a business and entrepreneurship academy. We have a Christ academy a film and broadcasting academy. Our new flight academy is where you actually um, learn how to fly using our brand new flight simulators. And um, you can keep going and earn out, you know, you can go to flight school and, and actually fly from what you learn in the flight simulators. We have a hospitality and tourism academy and then our Justice and Advocacy Academy and our STEM Academy. And if you click on any one of those Academy tabs, what you'll see at the top are the opportunities, uh, the competitions and the collaborative experiences those students have, the internships that they complete. When you scroll down, what you'll find helpful is under requirements and coursework. 
So requirements over on the left column is where you'll always find that will tell you what you need to get into that particular academy. And then the right hand of that, those two columns there would tell you about the graduation requirements. What is the coursework? What are the activities? Um, what does it look like when you graduate? What all kinds of things will you have accomplished when you're done? And then also really important at the bottom of each tab, you'll find an email address. So if there's something you can't find on the sites tonight, or if you have a question about something we say that comes to you later on after tonight, please feel free to go back and find those email addresses and let us know and we'll get you answers to those questions. So we usually have some frequently asked questions on this evening. And so the first thing that I wanna go over are conservatory auditions. And so the thing about the conservatory is that you do have to audition um, prior to the school year. And so if you're looking to join our conservatory for the 21-22 school year, you will need to audition this January. And you can see the dates for the auditions there. Some of them require appointments and some of them don't. If you're a current faith student, you can sign up for an appointment and pick up the information outside the office in the CPAC. Um, if you're not a current faith student, you can send an email to the email address that's right on the conservatory page or to um, Mrs. Slater, who's our Dean of Fine Arts, and she'll get you that information and help you make that appointment. So all of that information is there. It continually comes out in our news and notes and it's available online. So just keep your eyes open for that. But I, I know with um, Christmas coming up that that might come up fast for you if that's something you're interested in for next year. And then regarding our other academies, that's a big distinction we need to make is that even though for the conservatory, you do audition the year ahead of time with our academy applications, we actually accept applications the January um, of your freshman and sophomore year. So while you're in ninth or 10th grade. So if you're interested in an academy, you would not apply to one until January of 22 or 23. So are there multiple chances to apply to an academy? Yes, there are multiple chances to apply. So you don't have to decide now. You don't even have to decide your freshman year, okay? Can you change academies? Yes, you can change academies. You can decide that something's not right for you. We understand that you guys are 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and you do not need to make a decision necessarily about exactly what you wanna do for the rest of your life right now. But if you know you're passionate about something, our academies can really help you pursue that. It's, um, it's helpful if you do decide before 11th grade, because in 11th grade, that's really where a lot of um, your schedule kind of gets set in stone with how much room you have and then also um, getting, uh, when we help you get set up in your internship and we start to do that in 11th grade. So that's why that's really helpful to do. And then can you apply to more than one endorsement program? You absolutely can. Um, we have students who um, do the Honors Institute with any other. We have students who are in the STEM Academy and in the conservatory. You'll hear from our students tonight who are both in more than one um, and then Yes, uh, you can drop a program later. So if it's something you apply to and you're a part of and you decide it's not for you, you can drop out of it, that's okay. And then do you need to take a specific class to get into an academy? And the answer is sometimes. Like with the STEM Academy, we just look at math and, your math and science course grades and your GPA. But um, like for the Film Academy, you would need to take Art of Filmmaking. Um, and we take a look at how you do in Art of Filmmaking um, on your application to the Film Academy. Um, same thing for like Foundations of Business, you would wanna take that class before you join the Business and Entrepreneurship or the Hospitality and Tourism Academy. You would wanna take Flight One or Flight One class before um, you apply to the Flight Academy. So do take a look at those web pages for the entrance requirements. Some academies you would want to participate in an activity, some are courses, um, but it'll really guide you. And again, if you have questions, see those email addresses at the bottom of those web pages, and we'd be happy to answer those questions. So um, the next thing that we want to do, we want to transition over to our over to our students and we have Lauren here with us. Lauren is a senior and 
Um, Lauren's going to tell you about some of the activities and the things that um, she loves to participate in, and then she'll even be able to answer questions later on as well. So Lauren, why don't you, um, Lauren's a 12th grader, by the way, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about what you do here at Faith. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren Tamita, and as Ms. Blank said, I'm a senior this year. So I've been at Faith for seven years, and I've had the opportunity to participate in a lot of different programs like the volleyball team, and I'm a member of the Honors Institute and the STEM Academy. And my favorite out of all these was probably STEM just because of what I got to get out of the program. I had the opportunity to challenge myself outside of the regular academic curriculum. So I took classes like anatomy, and this year I'm in a STEM research class. And the academy also gave me the opportunity to complete an internship with an oral surgeon over summer. I'm really glad I joined the academy because at first I joined just because my brother was in it and I was a little interested, but it helped me to realize what I wanted to do career wise. And as I'm applying to colleges this year, it really made everything a lot easier in terms of figuring out like what I want to do with my life and speaking on what I'm passionate about. Thanks, Lauren. So um, we also have Willem here. So Willem, thanks for taking time out of your Peter Pan rehearsal. And so um, Willem is in 10th grade here. He's also really active, obviously. He's still here at school tonight. So um, Willem's gonna introduce himself and tell you a little bit about what he likes to do here. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Willem Miniago. Um, please excuse my attire. Um, like Miss Blank said, I'm actually sneaking out of our final Peter Pan rehearsal. So. We're opening tomorrow night, so get your tickets. Um, so I'm a theater performance major in the conservatory. I'm also a member of the STEM Academy and the Honors Institute, and I also swim varsity. Um, my decision to join the conservatory and the academy kind of came from um, a building interest in theater and science throughout middle school. Um, I had done uh, summer programs in science and done well in science classes. And so to me, it seemed appropriate to, um, to deepen and expand my experience um, just because of my interests. Um, so I would say that my favorite aspects of um, both of the academies I'm in is just being around other engaged and driven students who are interested uh, in the same things as me. Um, and then specific to the STEM Academy, the internship has been um, just amazing so far. I kind of started early. Um, and I just wanted to maybe give a little bit of background about my project, which is that my family's been going to South Carolina for over 20 years, and it's a really special place to me and my family. Um, and I just love the culture and you know the food and the beaches. Um, but so I've done several trips in the past studying coastal ecology. And this summer, I had the opportunity to work with um, some PhDs from Clemson University who are studying coastal ecology. Um, and just quickly, I wanted to just say like, we all know the sea levels are rising and bringing salt water into ecosystems that are not meant for high salinity levels. And so stands of trees like the cypress have experienced um, major damage because of these salt levels. And so my project involved being in the field all day with scientists. Um, I got 101 bug bites in the marshes. Um, I tried clothes and bug spray and nothing worked, but alas, uh, my project was measuring the diameter of trees in multiple plots in the swamps of South Carolina. And then um, after my work in the field this summer, the work is continuing. I meet with an expert every week as I work on data entry and analysis for her. Um, and eventually this research will be complete for publishing. And this is a project that they've wanted to publish for a long time. So in the end, I was interested in something and the Academy really helped me. Uh, to apply that in uh, a semi-professional, in a professional environment. So, um, and then moving along, I think that the most challenging part of being in an academy or multiple, multiple academies is kind of just like juggling the schedules and the time management part of it. Um, because a, an academy is a major time commitment and it's more and harder classwork than is required, which is why I you know, would suggest to only do it if you really like it. Um, but I think that that's balanced out with the, one of the best things about the academies is that they help you um, with your roadmap of classes at the beginning of high school. Um, and so like for my future plans um, after high school, I'm still figuring it out. But I think that the benefit of the academies is that they show you your commitment and passion um, and they allow you for real world experience now in professional environments 
that give us good life experiences that are applied beyond high school. And so I have followed my interests, which doesn't mean that, you know, I want to be a coastal ecologist or a Broadway star, um, because I don't really believe that we all need to know our careers now, as Ms. Blank said a little earlier. But um, I, when I was applying for the academies, I felt like I was declaring that I was gonna be a theater major in college or a lab scientist, and that's just not what it means. You know, like high school is about exploring and discovering, and this is what these programs do. They're here for deeper exploration and inquiry and discovery, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much to both of our student panelists. Hey, stay unmuted, Willem and Lauren. I wanna answer, ask you a few follow-up questions if you have a little bit of time real quick. Lauren, um, as a senior right now, have you started applying to colleges and such? I'm sure some yes. people are wondering. <laughs> I have um, one college left, but I've finished most of my applications, yeah. Whew, okay. <laughs> are you crossing your fingers? Like what is your number one, two, and three? Um, my number one school right now is Stanford and I hear back from them on the 15th. And then my others I hear back from later in March, but it's probably USC and Wash U in St. Louis. Those are probably my top schools. And I, I think you mentioned it, but say it one more time. What are you hoping to study in the future when you go to college? I'm hoping to study like being a bioengineer. I think that's something I'm interested in or somewhere in the medical field, but I'm gonna see where the road takes me. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And Willem, can you share with the audience here um, what role you're playing in Peter Pan and maybe quickly how they could possibly view um, our live stream of Peter Pan this weekend? Yeah, um, so I'm playing um, a pirate named Skylights and then my character actually gets killed and I come back as um, one of the people in Peter Pan's gang. So that's my role. And then if you'd like to view the show, um, I think there might be a few in-person tickets left. Um, that's on the Faith Conservatory um, website. And then the tickets for the live stream um, can be purchased um, on the Faith website, just on the regular Faith website. There's um, a way to purchase the live stream tickets there, so. Awesome, thank you. Okay, stay on you guys if you can. Willem, if you have to go back to rehearsal, go for it. But thank you to our student panelists. Um, I want to transition because, um, you know, we've been good on time. And so we do have time to finish our night for our Q&A. And so for our attendees that logged in a little bit later, um, we have a Q&A box at the bottom of your webinar screen. And we have had a few questions being submitted so far, but if you have more questions you wanna ask, please submit them right now. Um, and we'll, um, we'll go over them in a live version here. Questions can be addressed to both Lauren and Willem as students or to our principal, Mr. Scott Fogo, to Mrs. Blank, and to Mr. Dan Bikema, who is our assistant principal, but is also very knowledgeable about our college counseling and counseling programs. Um, something to mention is the fact that we have six full-time counselors on our campus that uh, work not only with academic counseling, but with social and emotional counseling as well. And so we are here to support your kids as they journey through high school. Um, it looks like we had a few questions that were answered kind of on the back end, but um, they're really good questions. So I wanna share them with you as we get a few more submitted. Um, a person asked, you know, are choir and other fine arts electives just for conservatory students or for all students? And um, it's really open to all students if they wanna take them as elective classes. And so activities like the fine arts and other electives sometimes happen only during school, but sometimes they're during school and after school. And so it just depends on what's going on. And some groups are audition or tryout based, but it really just depends on the activity. Um, another great question um, to ask was, you know, sometimes students struggle and what if you struggle in school, are the academies still for you? The answer is yes, right? Some of the professions that we go into the future, you know, GPAs are important, but sometimes that creative mind or um, that hands-on um, strength, you know, that applies too. So for our flight academy or for our film and broadcast academy, there are different requirements than there are for maybe the STEM academy or JNA. And so please remember to go to our website to check some of those things out. Um, in regards to some other questions that we have here, oh, thank you so much for submitting them. Um, one of the questions we have is that, um, how do we know if we will get, uh, when we'll get accepted to faith? Is it determined by test results? Um, I'll answer that one first as we wait for more. Um, we give out acceptances starting um, uh, February 1st, and then we continue to do so until uh, our spots fill up. 
Uh, the students that we want to accept to faith are solid academically. And I say solid, meaning, you know, we don't expect students to be perfect, right? Straight A's only, but we expect students to be trying hard at their courses and to be working in an upward trajectory. And so what that means is that if you have struggled in the past in school, we want to see based on transcripts, your letters of recommendation uh, and, and such, that you are working towards improving and constantly working at your hardest um, capacity um, to show that you can put in the work even if school is a struggle. Um, we also look for students that are committed to contributing to the community at faith. Your gifts are awesome, and we want you to be excited to come to school every single day and, and contribute to the school and be excited to represent Faith Lutheran. Um, and of course, um, a huge portion is the letters of recommendation and behavior. And so we believe that students are held up to a high standard and, um, and act accordingly while they're on campus. And so we really take in consideration those recommendation forms that you submit. Um, I was gonna say, I wanna open it up to Mr. Fogo, Mrs. Blank or Mr. Baikema. Um, someone asked, you know, what do you do in the Film and Broadcast Academy? And so maybe the teachers can tell me what their favorite thing is. Mr. Fogo, go for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, the film, it's basically two different academies kind of split. They, they share a lot of the same equipment. So like that's their one uh, academy, but if you're interested in the film portion or um, uh, then you're going to actually be making films and there's a lot of technical aspects to the filmmaking there's a lot of the uh, computer aspects but there's also um, the artistic side of the film academy of charting out um, how you want the film to look and the emotion inside the film and how to do the lighting and how to do all that kind of stuff and so you actually make your own films in the film and the broadcasting is the same thing we have a whole entire broadcast team here at the school and they do everything from just doing like small little pieces to these big ex expose stories. And so as you progress through the academy, your experiences get uh, larger and uh, bigger and more complex. And we have had in both those areas, we have had such amazing success for our graduates. Um, I don't know, a couple times a year, we hear that a kid is now the lead broadcaster in college or um, our kids have got into the most prestigious film schools in the country. And so it's a really, really, really effective uh, academy. Yeah. Um, Mr. Baikama, these are some questions for you about college counseling. Um, we've had uh, Ms. Yamaguchi here ask, what college counseling resources are available for upperclassmen? Are seniors guided throughout their process? And so maybe Mr. Baikama, you can tag team with Laura, Lauren a little bit since Lauren, you are a senior. So what college counseling resources are available and are seniors guided throughout the process? All right, well, I will just cancel the answer I was typing. <laughs> it was too um, important, you have, we have to share it with everybody. <laughs> right. um, yes, the, the seniors are guided throughout their college uh, application process by their college counselor. Um, their college counselor is decided by their, alphabetically by their last name or um, there is a, a, an honors institute counselor, Mr. Chilman, who is the counselor for all of the Honors Institute seniors. Um, you are, and you're actually guided throughout the entire process throughout high school, starting as a freshman. Um, the college counselors meet with the freshmen and their parents in the spring of their freshman year. There's, the freshmen are required to have at least a, a, at least one one hour meeting um, in, in, via Zoom or in person with their, uh, with their counselor and a parent or parents. Um, and then in the sophomore and junior year, there are class meetings and all kinds of different contexts. Um, the counselors remain available, obviously, for meetings or um, answering emails or phone calls or all that kind of stuff. Any questions that you have, anything that comes up, um, we also are constantly reminding um, students about, hey, this is what you should be doing now. Hey, look at this. Um, we partner with all of the different academies. We partner with all the different uh, departments in the school um, when we get information from universities that would be specific to um, a department or specific to the English department and uh, writing contests for scholarships or any of that kind of stuff. And then um, in the senior year, then again, you're required, each senior is required to have at least one one hour meeting with their uh, college counselor and um, a parent. Um, and then the, the counselors remain throughout the admission season, remain available to um, the students for whatever they need, whether, whether it's sending transcripts, writing recommendations, asking for recommendations, looking for scholarships, suggesting scholarships, um, any questions that they have, 
Um, I'm routinely having students come in here um, with questions, specific questions that they don't know how to answer on college applications. And I'll just have them log right into their application right here and, and help them with it. I've also over years, some kids, you know, some students just feel more comfortable sitting in their counselor's office while they answer their, while they submit their applications or while they're filling them out. Um, so they'll make appointments with their counselors or with me and just sit here and do it. And that way when they have questions, um, we're right here. And so we are fully involved in the entire process uh, from start to finish, yes. Awesome. Hey, Lauren, can you add, you know, you're a senior right now, you know, how have you benefited from the things that Mr. Bikem has described so far? Yeah, I think that faith is really helpful in the college application process. Um, this past summer, they had like a college boot camp that we as seniors were able to, to attend. So there was a representative from UC Irvine that helped with components of that application. And we even had the opportunity to send like a rough draft of our essay to the representatives that spoke at that boot camp, and they helped like with editing and saying what they were looking for. And the counselors also helped later in the year because whenever we had questions, they were just an email away and they always respond within like a day or two or maybe even the day of. So that was helpful to me. And the counselors at our school even emails with scholarship committees to help with financial aid. And I wouldn't have known about these scholarships without the emails that I got from my counselors. Awesome, thanks for sharing, Lauren. Uh, a good follow-up question that was, you know, uh, Bethany asked, um, or I'm sorry, not Bethany, but uh, one of our uh, parents asked here, our, oh, thank you, Shelby, for asking this question. Are counselors based on what letter last name starts or with whoever they're comfortable with? So a little bit of both. For right. academic counseling, our students are assigned by last name, but for social emotional needs, we really want students to go to the counselor that they feel most comfortable with. And so Mr. Brackham, am I saying that right? You're nodding your head. Yeah, yeah. and so truly, um, because we have uh, such a great counseling team, we want students to go to who they're comfortable with, but truly for academic needs and college counseling needs some of our counselors specialize in that and so we really want to direct kids to those specific counselors um you know dina here asked in film um do we have a stop motion area and i wanted to put this out to everyone uh, mr fogo do we have stop motion specifically this was a cool question i'm not even sure what that means we do have a whole <laughs> entire huge green room and we have a lot of uh i know we have a lot of fancy stuff in there but i don't know what a stop motion yeah, area is we we do have, uh, we have places where kids can work on stop motion projects. We've had students do stop motion projects in the past. Um, uh, it's been uh, when kids are able to choose what type of film they're making. Um, we do have the equipment in the areas and, this, and the stuff to do stop motion, so yes. Thank you, Mr. Orr. I figured that we did, but you know, it's one of those things where I didn't want to make sure we said the wrong thing. So um, another question we had, this is blank. This is a question for you. Um, what majors can you choose in the STEM Academy? Uh, and so for parents, just to set it up, in each of the academies, sometimes there's like subcategories that you can even narrow your track even more. And so Mrs. Blank will give us the example for STEM and then, um, and then we can discuss the other ones as well. Sure, so in STEM, you can do an engineering endorsement, a biomedical endorsement, which would be like if you want to go into medicine or research. We have an architecture strand and we have an architecture class that's taught by an architect. And so I get emails from our students that are in school that have gone on to this in college, just um, what a leg up they have from their experience with CAD and Revit and working on projects in there. Then we have an environmental science strand. We have a computer science strand, and then we have a general STEM endorsement. And the general STEM endorsement allows you um, a little bit of leeway. What it does is, um, so you could do the general STEM endorsement if maybe you're not, um, you love math and science, computer science, things like that, um, but you're not exactly sure which area you wanna go into yet. So it allows you, to pick and choose more your courses and internships instead of being a little bit more narrow. Okay, or you could use a general STEM endorsement that might be for areas that cross over. For example, we have students that are interested in biomedical engineering, in which case they would want to um, take maybe um, AP biology, but then maybe they wanna do an engineering internship just to kind of see the crossover. And so there's a couple different ways we can use that. Um, I would also give the example for people that in our Justice and Advocacy Academy, we have other 
We have other endorsements as well. So we have three different endorsements in our JNA Academy. Um, students could focus on jurisprudence, which would be law, diplomacy, which would be um, things going into, um, our, those students participate in Model UN, um, things like that. And then criminal justice is the third endorsement for the Justice and Advocacy Academy. Um, Mrs. Choi, is there any others that I should be commenting on? You know, I think you covered those. Were, that was the example I was going to give with JNA. Um, another similar example is the fact that in the Fine Arts Conservatory, you'll specialize in a certain area. So you will choose uh, technical theater, vocal performance, instrumental music, and really narrow down and dig into that specific area of the fine arts that you're interested in, most interested in. Um, you know, we have a little bit more time. Parents, I want to remind you, if you have questions, please submit them to our Q&A down below. Um, and hey, uh, we, we have one question in the, in the chat. Scott, we've got a lot of questions about the Flight Academy. Can you just speak to the Flight Academy a little bit because you are, you've been uh, the closest one working with that one? Yeah, we, we started seeing that there was the, like the whole world was thirsty for pilots, that they're, they're, they're coming up upon a crisis. And so I talked to some people in that field and especially a major in the Air Force has really helped us out a lot, um, Colonel Mike Mathis. Um, and say, is it hard to become a pilot? And the answer is, well, yes and no. It does take some time, like all things, um, but it's actually really easy for high school kids uh, to get started on that journey. So after year one, um, you could, our, our flight one class will help you uh, basically pass the written portion and the interview portion you do have to go out and actually fly a plane for, for 40 hours. But then at the end of that, um, you have a, what's called a, 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 a personal pri a pilot's license, a PPL. And flight two, then you get, get your instrument rating. And both of those, the PPL and the instrument rating are key to any type of flying profession you wanna to be to, whether you're flying passengers, whether you're in the Air Force or you're flying commercially like for FedEx, any of that, you have to have those two things. And so if you end up going to get your pilot's license in college, that actually wipes out a huge amount of your college bill. So it could end up actually being a money saving and especially a time saving venture if your son or daughter is interested in, in having a, a, a career in flying. Also, it helps you um, get into the Air Force or the Marine or the Navy of, of pilots. I mean, there's other qualifications, of course, um, but they they looked on that really favorably if you have your pilot's license. So we, we decided to start all that and then we got really lucky and we got a $200,000 donation. So now we have a flight lab um, with 10 simulators in it. And that those simulators actually really help you cut down on the price of, of getting your pilot's license because some of your flight hours can be completed on the simulators. So right now, every morning, both on maroon and gold days, um, we have kids in our library that are flying simulators and learning how to fly. And it's, it's really, it's been really successful and fun. Um, and we, we're really looking forward to it. They'll take their written tests at the end of January. So already they're going to be able to take their, take their FAA uh, test. Um, and uh, the teacher thinks she's done it for a long time. The teacher thinks they're all going to pass. And so it's exciting. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Frogel, for sharing. If you go into our um, social media account or our Instagram account, you'll see a recent post uh, showing a student working on one of our live simulators in the library. It's truly an amazing thing to see. Um, a few more questions here that have been submitted. Um, Bethany asked, what major should you choose if you want to be in the medical field? I would say you definitely want to look into the STEM Academy um, if you have any interest at all in the medical field. Um, thank you so much, Ms. Bullard, for hey, sharing. Mike, you want to go ahead? I'll say too, there's oh. what we call a biomedical a strand is the one that's most focused in on the medical field. Yeah. And Lauren, did you want to share something as well? I saw you get excited. Oh, yeah. Well, um, a lot of my friends decided to take the biomedical branch within the STEM Academy, and they had the opportunity, even like with the whole COVID situation, to complete some pretty cool internships where they got exposure in that field. Awesome. Do you remember any specifics, like who went where for internship? Uh, um, I if can't remember any specifically. I completed mine with an oral surgeon and I had the opportunity to observe different surgeries and learn like the sterilization and all the different, like seeing the x-rays and knowing what he's going to do for the patient. 
So I got to learn through that way. I think my friend did hers at a veterinarian's office. I'm not sure what the other kids had opportunities to. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Uh, Mrs. Bullard uh, shared that she would want to go back to high school. I agree. Parents, if you want to go back to high school, you got to talk to Mr. Fogo here. Maybe he'll let you in. Um, Mr. Fogo, can you answer what grade a student can start the fight program classes in? Yeah, we have them start in 10th grade. Um, it just gives us a little bit. The one thing about the flight program, somebody else asked us earlier, it's not so much your GPA or, or, or things like that that get you in. It's more like your maturity. And the people who run the, the, the flight program say very much so they're like, you, th this is life and death, right? We're not going to let a kid up in an airplane and put their life in danger. And so it's more just as they grow up, are they mature enough to get in and stuff like that? We put some, we put some like lower grade qualifications just to make sure they're serious, um, but they're certainly not high ones. And 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 um, we have kids that would, you know, probably characterize themselves as more average performers in academics that still um, are in there. Thank you, Mr. Fogo. Hey, a uh, quick um, answer to your question. Someone asked, what are golden maroon days? Since Lauren and, if you, and Mr. Fogo, you mentioned them. golden maroon days um, are basically what we label our block schedule. And so students have eight courses in their schedule, but they run four a day. And so to help students remember which four classes are on which four days, we call them gold days and maroon days. And, and golden maroon are school colors. So thanks for asking that question, Lydia. Uh, Mr. Baikama, um, a student is asking, you know, um, wanting to go to medical for university. We've kind of been talking about that. Um, I want, they want to know um, what, who helps them ensure what proper courses they take to make sure they're on the right track. And then um, what else should they take um, and what other subjects should they take according uh, with their peer group? Um, well, I mean, you, you should, if you're interested, if, if you want to go into the 10th STEM program, then the, the biomedical strand of the STEM will um, automatically kind of make sure that you take those courses. Uh, you do not have to be in the STEM program in order to do that. My own daughter, for instance, is um, a senior and graduating and interested in, in medical uh, pre-med and college. And um, along the way, just decided she didn't, she wasn't going to join STEM because STEM was going to decide her electives for her. And she wanted to be able to do things like take photography and and do stagecraft and production and things like that that she wouldn't necessarily have had room for. Um, and so really the, the counselors are there, are here as well to help you through your selection process of your classes, re requesting your classes. And so what's happened just today, we opened our course requests for next year um, and they're open from now through um, January 8th for the current students and what they're doing and what like Mr. Chilman today and Mrs. Lasinski today um, all day long we're meeting with students um, about their um, about questions answering questions about what they should request for next year and so you would sit down with your counselor and you'd say hey I'm really interested in looking into the the medical field and in, in pre-med in college and so you know what should I take? And there's all kinds of different things. I saw the question about like zoology, you know, what, what would I take um, in STEM if I was interested in zoology? And so the answer to that question would come from your counselor or from Mrs. Blank. And the recommendation I believe would be that you would do a kind of a combination of, uh, maybe that's where one of those where Mrs. Blank mentioned that a general STEM would be, would work out pretty well for you, a combination of biomedical and then environmental and so you would you would want to take the ap biology class if you could you would want to take the ap um, environmental science class um, if you could you would want to take say an anatomy class um, things like that um, and so we do the counselors do that as well they'll sit down with you and they'll look at what the choices are and make recommendations um, that are going to prepare you for that um, in, in all of the areas including you know math you know what 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 math am i going to have to take my freshman year in college right away if i'm if i'm interested in in majoring in biochemistry or something like that we we all we know those answers and and even can look at um requirements at colleges with you sit down with you and look it up yeah 
Thank you, Mr. Bankema. Last question was asked about, you know, how are freshmen introduced and what opportunities are in, based on grades? You know, freshmen are introduced at course assemblies, um, also by talking with their counselor and doing their counselor meetings. But um, what Mrs. Blank, I think, mentioned earlier was the fact that they will actually run reports and invite certain students with certain GPAs to apply to things as well, if there is a GPA requirement indeed. And, and mainly, again, through our website too. Um, unfortunately, we're getting to that time. It is seven o'clock and so out of respect for your time tonight, um, I want to make sure that um, we say first and foremost, thank you. Um, thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Um, Mr. Fogo, I wanna make sure that you get the last word as well, but so before I close, Mr. Fogo, do you have any thoughts to add before I close tonight? Yeah, I think the most important thing to know is we'll answer all your questions. So you could email me or Mr. Bikemo or Mrs. Choi or Mrs. Blank. And we are, um, we are very happy to walk you guys through this um, and, and to make sure that you get the classes that you want and need and you get to actually just explore your future. Um, as you know, between 14 year old freshman and an 18 year old senior, a lot of changes happen. I, I, I tell kids all the time, I changed my major in college five times even. I didn't know what I wanted to be when, even when I was a sophomore in college. And so this is a time to explore, look for things that you're interested in, uh, explore things that you have an affinity in um, and, and just really go for it. Um, um, I think sometimes you hear about all this and people get so nervous um, about the future, but the most important thing is you come and you, you have fun, you do what needs to get done and you, you work your very best at your grades. Um, all, all those other things, even if you, if they're, they're, oh, the one thing I wanted to say is about 50% of our kids are not in an academy. And so if you're thinking, oh, we have all these academies, I have to pick one. That's absolutely not true. And we have kids go to Ivy Leagues and Stanford and UCLA and all over the country that have never been in an academy. And so it's really important to know, come, it's like what, it's what Mr. Bikeman said about his daughter. Um, she didn't join an academy because she wanted to take other classes that she was interested in. That's a perfect time to do that. But if you're really into something and you know what you want to do and you're really passionate about it, then dive deep. Um, it does help you get into college when you do some deep diving like that. And so um, I think that's what I'd say um, that mo most importantly is that we care for your kid and we're going to walk alongside you as a family as through this high school journey. Thank you so much, Mr. Fogo. Parents, this re uh, webinar will be available. Um, we'll make sure to email it to all of those that were registered for this event. And you can actually review and, and watch the whole thing again if you want um, on our Facebook page. Eventually it'll be posted there as well. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. As always, please contact us. You can respond to the email that sent you the webinar link. Um, if you reply to that email and ask more additional follow-up questions, I'll make sure to answer those questions or, or forward it to the people um, that can answer them for you. And again, please check out our school's website for all the great information and videos and everything you need to learn about the school. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and God's blessings. And we hope that you all stay healthy and happy and have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful night. <laughs>